Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Kramer Score Studio with Eric. We did it! We did it! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we got there. So, Eric is here with me today to, I believe you said you wrote some poetry. You've got like a long uh, just um, expose on goblins, right? Right. And okay. it's about a half an hour long, so per, tuck in. Wait, just, oh, per goblin, half an hour long. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so with 42 goblins, that's. We're going to be here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, get comfortable. Make yourself comfortable, some popcorn. Exactly. So get ready for <laughs> some poetry. Get ready for a very, very long uh, detailed explanation on what all these goblins are, what they do, and where they stack up in the tier rankings, right? Yep. So like tier rankings on this uh, channel, uh, I have done no homework ahead of time, except for get everything ready for the tier rankings, and I am just going to be going in blind to it. But Eric is our goblin expert here, all right? Yeah, you, sure. You can self-proclaimed expert. How many, how many goblin decks have you had? Uh, so I, I for sure have two. You have two currently. currently. I think I actually might have three. Three. Uh, I you built. I built more than that in digital. <laughs> okay. So when you forget that you have a third goblin deck, yeah. that means you're more of a goblin expert. I think than I've me. got like four or five technically, if you count like digital ones that I haven't actually like bought the cards there you go goblin expert technically uh, i was thinking back actually i have built around one of these commanders one of my first commanders on the channel actually and we'll get to that one later on but uh but yeah you are a goblin expert i so have an affinity for goblins affinity i don't know goblins. if i'm an expert on goblins i mean it's kind of easy to be an expert on goblins i think because they just do the thing but... that's true they do the goblin thing <laughs> <laughs> what do they do <laughs> they go wide <laughs> yes <laughs> they like friends you lots get, and lots yeah. of buddies you lots of ones that you don't want to expendable show friends exactly there you go <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we're going to be going through the tier rankings. Uh, we've got uh, 42 goblins, I believe. I think it is. I, I think, think so. Yeah, counting the two newest goblins from Alice Center Junction, unless another thing has been spoiled, <laughs> essentially. But here we go. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be going with. Um, I think we're just going to go by mana value, essentially, on how we're actually starting these off and yeah. going through them. We're not starting like, okay, we're going to go the A tiers first, the S tiers first, right. whatever. So we got S tier all the way down to F tier. We do have an F tier in this one. We that do. Was, that was requested, so I have added that. Sure. Eddie actually, are, Eddie there's didn't a get couple that. that are Fs. Eddie actually had an F tier, but I didn't realize that Eddie had an F tier. And oh. it was like, that's an F. And I'm like, I don't have that on here. So we're just putting it in D. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. All right. So let's get things going. Let's jump in. The first one, according to Moxfield, uh, is going to be Ardaz, Cobbler of War. The yeah. Shoemaker. Yep. It's a two mana, one, one with haste, which is good mm -hmm. for goblins want to go fast. Oh yeah. Um, whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. And then you can pay four into it to make a, a goblin with haste. Um, but you can only use that as a sorcery, which is a bummer. Wizards. I, I think I, it's a solid C. I yep. mean, it's at best a C probably. I think that's probably pretty fair. It just, it's not terrible. It, you know, it's going to benefit from what goblins want to do, but mm -hmm. yeah, just, it's not really that, that I think I think that's fair. I mean, I think the, the not weird thing about this one, it's kind of like, um, what is that, uh, the ogre, uh, with like the, the whip and like the, uh, oh, the creature uh, comes into play plus two plus zero and haste. I think. Yeah, Whatever. yeah, it's the it costs four. Uh, ogre battle driver. I think battle driver. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say battle master, but it's, it's kind of like yeah. that, right? But it doesn't grant the haste, so you have to have creatures that are hasty actually benefit from this. And yeah. yes, that is a very highly costed. Like, hey, make goblins. Four mana for a one one with haste at sorcery speed is just I mean, it's, not. Good. Yes, it's technically on that turn. Like hitting if is you a need three to, one. But. The the nice thing is, is it it has the ability to satatisfy its first prompt mm -hmm. with its second yep prompt agreed it's just so i mean like ability. that that yeah it's expensive it's not mm -hmm. you know efficient um but it it has the ability to make itself run which yep. is nice i think you're right i think i think a c seems pretty good again we uh reserve the right to change the uh these as we go okay Absolutely. like if, if we change them up i do have this in front of me so i guess i have an advantage on this where i'm be like well eric you're really wrong on that one hey if i'm wrong blame eddie that's true <laughs> blame eddie the comments will have eric's wrong but eric can't be i wrong. might be the expert but it, it, blame eddie, blame eddie. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go all right goro goro disciple of ryusai a 2-2 goblin samurai because that's the thing that costs one in a red pay a single red man a creature control gain haste until the turn pay three red red create a five five red spirit dragon creature zone with flying activate only if you control an attacking modified creature which includes or his equipment and counters modifications Yep. Um, I built this one in digital for sure. Oh, nice. I have not got around to buying cards for it. I like mm. it. It's kind of fun. It is um, a fun one. I put this as like a B. I'd say that's pretty fair. So again, it's it, the fact that it gives 
all, all of your team haste. Mm -hmm. That's a great ability just right there. You don't mm -hmm. even need to do the dragon thing. I think I really leaned into a goblin deck that wanted dragons sure. yeah. and modified creatures. Um, I think that's a nice, fun, creative space to make this deck more than just, but even just on its face. Yep. It's a two mana, two, two. That's fine. And it has the ability to give all the creatures you control haste which is an incredibly valuable it's ability awesome. for one yeah. red mana for one red mana i mean you have to pay for it yeah. but yeah that's better to, to do that than a, not have it it's i mean a it's a solid it's a, b in my book i agree it's like kenny's first ability essentially but like lower to the ground goblin specific i mean not goblin focused but you definitely can go goblins in it and you are incentivized to maybe get some mana too if you really want to go in the dragons as well and you don't have to tap it too yep so that's the other thing it's mm -hmm. like you you can get this down and immediately do the ability if you've got three mana available mm -hmm. you know you can give uh, remake this out onto the board and give it give it and anybody else you put out haste. Sure. Absolutely, Why it can not? be. I can just be like a fervor sitting in your command zone, kind of waiting yeah. until you need to give your creatures haste. Absolutely, I love it. Good solid card. All right, next up, Grenzo Dungeon Warden. I mean, okay, so uh, for those who don't know Grenzo, Grenzo um, enters the battlefield uh, with X plus one plus one counters on it, and then you can pay two generic. Um, put the bottom card. Put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard mm -hmm. if it's a creature um, with power less than or equal to his uh, Grenzo's power. You can put it onto the battlefield. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just like, for me, it's an S. I mean, like the way Fair you enough. can build this deck. This deck, I've never seen a version of. If the deck is built the way Grenzo wants to be built, mm. it's always a really house deck. I mean, it's really good. I I would definitely agree. I'd say that. And I, I would like you, you get your perspective on this too. But when I do these tier lists, typically I do them from like casual commander, not CDH. So yeah. we're not doing a CDH list here, okay? Right. Casual commander, but like on the high, well, I, I'm assuming one of the higher ends of casual commander when it comes to how these decks are built around these commanders. Right. And with that, with Grenzo, you can do some pretty disgusting things with Grenzo. Oh, I mean, yeah. There, there's some definitely easy infinite combos you can do with Grenzo as well, yeah. but I'm manipulating the bottom of your library, that kind of stuff, too. Right. So and It's a casual nine, as I call that. That's good. Good call, <laughs> yes. Grenzo did get nerfed, I will say, though, recently. I mean, the past couple of years with uh, the one of those two lands, the Hideaway lands, right? Because now oh, yeah. Hideaway is now random for some reason, Wizards. Yeah. Why did you need to change that, you meanies? Yeah. Grenzo players are like, guess I'm taking out the black hideaway land. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a really, I mean, Grenzo is really good. And if you've got the mana for it, you can dump a bunch of counters onto it right away to mm. make that even more. It, it's, I've never seen a Grenzo deck um, not perform strongly, even if it comes out slow. 100%. Yeah. If you want a commander that goes crazy with Workhorse, a really old janky card, congratulations. It's and we fun. love that. That gets extra <laughs> bonus points. Exactly. If, you if it <laughs> makes an obscure jank card from yeah. yesteryear Workhorse. viable. <laughs> <laughs> Look up that picture. <laughs> Nothing against the art on it. Just like, you know, like hmm, what's going to be powerful and magic? A horse statue. <laughs> yes. Everybody's digging through their chaff. Uh, there's one where's in here the somewhere. Workers? Where's the workers? I think it's like three or four dollars. I don't know. Anyways. All right, next up. Grenzo is back again. Apparently two mana. Uh, Grenzo Havoc Razor, a 2-2 two -two goblin rogue for red red. Creature you control deals counters to player. Choose one. Go to our creature the player controls. Exit the top card of the player's library until end turn. You may cast that card. You may spend mana or mana of any color to cast it. Go for it. Yeah, I think um, it's probably a B. Strong B. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe kind of creeping on a yeah you but... can always say you know that's how i justify things and then people can yell at me in the comments below later I'm like it's a b plus a minus but i'm gonna stick with a b for now and then if i need to change it later i'll change it later the the mono red i think makes us a little bit less strong mm -hmm. um you know goad definitely plays into the red mm -hmm. uh color a lot but there you know you kind of lose out on some of the you know um top deck the theft stuff you know yep. when you don't have like blue or black so, yeah, I think the mono red makes it a strong B. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah, I think that they're because because this is only limited to, um, again, like it's combination to a player. You are having to get through, which is, yeah, that's you, the other you, thing. You can do it. You can do it. But again, like it's not limited, like whenever one or more creatures deal combat, it's not limited in that way, where it's right. like you only get like this once or twice or three times, depending on how many opponents you're hitting. So, like, if you get a lot of creatures through, you're getting a lot of value out of that. So, the yeah. nice thing, well, I mean, it's card advantage in red, mm -hmm. right? Because it's playing out the other player's library. Yep, little impulse draw. Until end of turn, though. So, mm -hmm. it's not like newer cards where they're like until, until the end of your turn or, or the end of like your that. next turn, yeah. And you can't really target your own library. Yep. You know, so it's. So you're, it's yeah you're going after you got to kind of mm. consider okay do they have things that i actually want to cast mm. these aren't red isn't really the color of like play other people's decks it's it's not also the color of like planning ahead which or kind planning of goes, ahead. it's just like hey what i hit cool right. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah a solid b i mean solid yeah. b. i think that's good all right 
Uh, Ishi, Ishi, Aki, Crackshot. Did I say that right? I don't know. Uh, is it Aki or Aki? Aki? Let's go with Aki. Aki. Aki sounds better. All right, you I, go for it. Just a quick aside. Yeah. I love what I love about goblins throughout mm. like all the different planes is depending on where they're from, they oh, look yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. The flavors are different. They're like they, like these are like yeah. kind of like armadillo goblin esque yeah. kind of things. And it's also I never realized it's riding a goat. Yeah, I never realized that. I never realized he's, got, he's got his hand on. Well, I guess it's on the horn. I thought it was on yeah. holding its ear. But yeah. Yeah. and the goat is just like eating grass at the same time this is happening. Yeah, he's just kind of like there's a giant goblin on my back. Yep. <laughs> All right, what does this one do? So it's a uh, two mana, one, one. Um, whenever an opponent plays a spirit or arcane spell, Ishi Ishi deals two damage to that player. I mean, this okay. is just an F. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think spirit and arcane spells are OP and everyone plays them. I mean, like, if you've got a meta where somebody's <laughs> running spirit. spirit tribal and that you want to build you a You want to wreck them? <laughs> to just run against it? Sure, then you can make it viable. Just but a hateful spirit. In a though. vacuum. Oh my just, God, I love it. It's just definitely not a card it is, that's... It's that's definitely... I think, I think I understand why you put the F tier in here. That makes sense because this is most definitely... Yeah, it's, it's just it's, super niche. It's, it's incredibly specific. But again, like if you do have that one body who's like spirit or arcane or tribal... Or arcane, yeah. And then you're like, all right, I do damage doublers damage triplers and just have this in play just sitting and being like oh please cast these yeah, right. <laughs> yep exactly all right here we go uh crark the thumbless a 2-2 partner commander let's say that so we're assuming i'm going to assume at least one additional color essentially is this from my evaluation i guess if you were wise i'm yeah. assuming yeah. i'm assuming you could you do could do you rock rack with it but you know sure, yeah. yeah okay all right goblin wizard for one and a red whenever you cast an insert sorcery spell flip a coin if you lose the flip return it, that spell to its owner's hand if you win the flip copy that social sword two two targets for the copy all right what are your thoughts on this one this one's tough um i think it's in that same category that the other grenzo is where it's mm -hmm. a really strong b um it could push into a depending because there's a lot of stuff you can do manipulating coin flips yep and and that has gotten a good good amount of support there are definitely some in things. recent years um so it's mono red spell slinger but you again you could get two extra colors with this too you could the partner yeah so. assuming you let's say assuming you go blue assuming like, you go blue okay it. so you just have like, one if you're color. gonna go spell slinger it's kind of that's yep. the typical color combo yep. right i think that pushes this a lot more yep into the, like the a tier i'd say i'd say so as well i'd say that this this one we might get some arguments in the comments below from like the cdh perspective because i believe krug is actually pretty high in cdh oh yeah because like yeah if you play some like i mean i don't, I don't even know what the combination is with this in cdh but like just hypothetically like if I just play an extra turn spell, if I just play like time warp yeah. at five mana and I hit the flip correctly and I copy it, I get two extra turns and that is probably game over. And I think there's cards that, or maybe there, maybe it's an uncard that I'm thinking of, so maybe it might not be legal, but I'm Crark's pretty sure there's one where it's like, <laughs> you can ignore one of the, if you flip a coin the, for Crark's two and you is can an ignore card. One. Yeah, you can, I believe okay. you get, yeah, you can flip twice. Yeah, so like, essentially you can kind of like yep. almost stack it yep. to like you always are going to win. Yeah, or you at least have a higher, or you have a really 75% high percent, chance yeah. of hitting. Yeah, or right. whatever. You have a higher than 50% chance yeah. of hitting. Uh, Crux's other thumb is an uncard, which is that's not, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, the other thumb. I, there are actually, I mean, there are playgroups. I'm sure they're like, yeah, you can use both. Sure, it's fine. It's the exact same card. It's just the other thumb. Right. Yeah. So funny, but yeah, this one I'd say I'm I'm 100 on board. That's completely fine. A, a tier is fine with me. I'd say that yeah, CDH probably is gonna be pushed up. You a can little crack bit. it wide open in, in CDH. Oh yeah, this Absolutely. thing is well because again, also you can just take advantage of it being on the stack and copying it with other things too. So even if it bounces back to your hand, it's still a good thing you get the card back. And yeah. Still got other things you can, too. You can you know infinitely copy a burn spell potentially or yeah. something like that so um fun times to yeah, be had definitely okay next up slow bad oh, goblin tinkerer why don't bad. you read that one out all right two mana one two uh sacrifice an artifact target artifact gains indestructible until end of turn mm -hmm. um yeah i think this one is solid b okay i think you could make a case for for an a tier but i mean like you really gotta uh, like basically it's you know you the assumption pr that i would make mm -hmm. is you're you're playing clues or treasures sure. and you can use this to protect you know um artifact creatures sure you know absolutely so it, it depends it really depends on the artifact creatures mm. um and what ones you're protecting or whatever i think there's a good space in there because you i mean vehicles are artifact mm -hmm. creatures potentially yeah, so yeah. there is some kind of fun space to play so i like that about it um but it, it, it it's mono red um artifacts and yeah so i think it's kind of narrow um so i would probably say b yeah i'm with Strong you on that. B. i'm with you on that i think that yeah if you had another color with this like if you had like black with this it'd be much better with like tutoring effects to get like specific things or like a marionette master in there it would be yeah. great too like draining people really quickly 
there's still value you can get from sacrificing artifacts and getting like triggers off of certain things too. Yeah, um, yeah there's definitely some cool things you can do with it, and I, I think I agree. B sounds yeah. good to me. B. All right, next up, a new one, Vile Smasher, Gleeful. How do I say that word? Gren grenadier? It's like a gren it's someone who throws grenades. Yeah. Gren is it grenadier? Grenadier. Gren it just sounds wrong to me. I don't know why every single time. Grenadier. Grenadier. Gren yeah, no, grenadier is what I <laughs> like. Grenadier. No, that sounds so Gleeful wrong. grenadier. Gleeful grenadier. <laughs> That's probably how he says it because he's kind of got this like yeehaw yeah. sort yeah. of saunter Vile to Vile Smasher him. somehow got yeehaw now just because <laughs> everyone just like, Gleeful you know grenadier. It's like whenever like people go to like Nashville and then they all just buy like, you know, like the cowboy hats, the boots, yeah. whatever. And they're like, we're all just now cowboys. Yeah, right. And it's like, <laughs> dude, you're from like Vermont. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. A three, two goblin mercenary who's from vermont uh for two <laughs> mana in ractos uh this is now uh lore apparently yeah vile smasher is from vermont yeah uh whenever another outlaw enters the battlefield under control vile smasher gleeful grenadier Gren grenadier whatever it is steals one damage to target opponent again assassins mercenaries pirates rogues and warlocks are outlaws yeah th this is the first time i'm actually seeing this card all right so because this new was goblin. not in the list when i looked at it off um, the cuff what do you think <sighs> Are you wondering how limited outlaws are? <laughs> That's the thing, right? <laughs> yes, it's it like is. I there's n I mean, I guess outlaws are pretty widely supported cuz it's rogues, there's it's pirates. Um so I mean, yeah, it's definitely probably either a pirate or rogue or both tribal. Yep, and um, there are now mercenary tokens. I mean, there's a limited number of ways yeah. to make them now cuz they're just from one set, but yep. B Yeah, that, probably that, a B. That's, that's that's fair, I'd say. I take Just because pirates goblins, and rogues but... are in there. Otherwise, it would be a C. Yeah, I, I think the one thing with, with this, it is low to the ground. The one thing that with this that kind of trips me up with it being like a B versus a C, I personally probably say C, maybe C plus at the most yeah. compared to the other ones, which is fair. Uh, but it's just like, it's just one damage. Like, it's you, one need, damage. you need a lot of setup to like get this to actually like hum. And like, personally, right. like, I mean, this is again, this is just maybe me like also uh, tuning it down a little bit in my own rankings just because like, I feel like they could have done it a little more interesting. They could have been like three damage, but it's a random opponent. Again, like Vile Smasher original, like basically right. like that. Or again, one damage to each opponent. Like, would that be overpowered? No, I don't. No. I think that would put up the B. That, that, that's the thing too. It's like, I'm trying to, on uh, off the top of my head, think of how many in, um, cards are out there that just dump out any, of, the, of, any of these specific creatures. I don't and know I don't think there's, there's a, a ton. There's a lot of instances of maybe one or yeah. two. Yeah. But like, it's not like goblins where no, it's goblins like, you know, like... you're just dumping out. And which is probably mm -hmm. why goblins yep. aren't in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd but, be kind of yeah. funny. It'd be funny if it's like assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, warlocks, which are all like jobs essentially, and then goblins, which is not a I job. <laughs> but how, yeah. how would that work if you did like a card where um, it, it change it makes creatures all creature types? Like would yeah, that, that would count? Yeah, yeah, if you have like um, yeah. uh, mask with nexus, yeah, that would yeah. work. So yeah, so, if you have. I mean, that's that cracks it open. That could. Depending I mean, on, you have still have to th string together a Rube Goldberg machine yeah. of like, it takes this a, card makes it these takes a tokens lot of setup. and then gets exactly. these, that, and, that. and then like you cast like, you know, your big like, you have Cranko out and you're like, all right, I tap to make 50 goblins. And then someone's like, okay, I, I destroy your artifact. Yeah. <laughs> makes all your things yeah. and outlaws. You're like, yeah. oh no. Okay. <laughs> and then it's, and then of course you got to have coat of arms in there too, just because you, you want to break everyone's brain. At of the course. Table. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think uh, that that should be fine. With should we that. put him in the C? I, I mean, or I would say B because it's, I, hey, this is, you're the goblin. Only, this I, off the cuff. I, I would fine. say a low B uh, because of the fact that pirates and rogues are pretty supported. That's okay. That's completely And they're fine. relative. They can be low to the ground. Like rogues yeah. can be pretty low to the ground. That's fair. Absolutely. So and we can, can always, just, we always reserve the right to move it later if we want to. True. All right. All right. Next up, we got Breaches Eager Pillager. Why don't you read that one? Oh, I've got uh, Zoya. What? What order is? Zoya. Oh, I skipped it. Oh, that's my bad. Lava <laughs> I scrolled down earlier than I would to get to it. Then I scrolled down again. Oh. Yes, you're correct. I am wrong. Sorry. Zoyawa Lava Tongue. Why don't you read that one? Zoyawa Lava Tongue. There you go. Um, it is a two mana, two, two in Rakdos colors. Mm -hmm. Death Touch. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, each opponent may discard a card or sacrifice a permanent. Zoyowa Lava Tongue deals three damage to each opponent who didn't. I like this. I like mm -hmm. where um, decks that give you the cho give your opponents the choice, mm -hmm. like, hey, you can do this, and I get something, or you can. It's kind of that like those um, political cards from like sure. conspiracy and stuff like that, where mm -hmm. it's like you know you can vote or something like that. So this kind of feels similar to that. So if, for that, I would say, um, if you descend. I mean, you're you're making them sacrifice a permanent or discard a card, or they take three damage, ain't nothing. Three damage ain't nothing. It's um, a lightning bolt's worth, and it's a, 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 it's 
your end step each time you have it. Yep, you descend if a permanent card, and I believe that has to be, it can't be a token, I don't believe. I think is how this actually is working, which is always confusing to me. When no, you say, no I, I, if you, I, I, you descend if a permanent card was put into but your graveyard. Says, because familiar. it says card. I think is why essentially really? it, it's a really weird ruling. I could be completely. Let have, me know in the comments below if I'm wrong on this, but I believe I someone might be told playing me, my pirate deck from that pre-con or whatever wrong. Yeah. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a lot of because it's a confusing thing. Like it should say non-token. I'm pretty sure I'm. Oh I yeah. Be completely if a wrong. permanent was put in, it here. should just say non-token. Like yeah. because again, like tokens technically hit the graveyard, which confuses people too. But that's just completely fair. But like I believe because it says permanent card. Which is weird, but I believe that uh, so like that kind of like knocks this down a little bit, obviously, in my opinion, because like a treasure could trigger that if it wasn't the case. But since it like has but to be an actual can't. permanent, then yeah. it, then I think it, it turns it down a little bit. I could be so wrong on that. Like, okay, let's I, assume that that's correct, because that, okay. that that does seem like that. I mean, it says permanent card, so let's assume that that's the the case. If that's the case, I'd say this is a C. Okay. If yeah. it was, if it's not, any then... permanent gets put, does it makes descend. I, I would bump it up to maybe uh, B. Fair enough. Here. But we'll put it at C. Okay. Easy enough. All right. Breaches, Eager Pilger. And yeah, let us know in the comments below if we are correct or not on this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, could, <laughs> I need I, to know because I'm in front need of the internet right now and right. I could, but I've got this all on my screen. So actually, you could right now if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> to, to, to no, don't, don't worry design. about it. Don't worry okay. about it. I was kidding. All right. Breaches, Eager <laughs> Pillager. A uh, 3 3 Goblin Pirate for three mana in red. First strike. Whenever a pirate you control attacks. Choose one that has been chosen this turn. Create treasure token. Tarkuch can't block this turn. Exile the top card. Library may play it this turn. What are your thoughts on breaches? This is the second breaches, I believe, out of uh, the three that we have. Yes, I believe so. Um, I I like it. It's uh, I would put it in a, in a solid B. Um, okay. it's modular. It's got you know like what do you want to do? Um, it doesn't. It's not just like an ETB where you know you're in mono red. You're never going to be able to blink it again mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's whenever a pirate you control attacks. So I mean, there's plenty of support for pirates in mono yep. red. Um, and it gives you ramp. It gives you uh an ability to get through um and it also uh gives you uh red's card draw you know um, yep so, impulse draw yeah yeah i love it uh, it's a s solid solid b in sure. my opinion. absolutely yeah i mean again like you said over the years we've gotten more and more support for pirates this just keeps getting more and more options essentially the only limiting factor obviously is that like you can only choose three of them essentially which i mean you only choose three you only get each one of them once which is still a good amount of value though. yeah absolutely yeah okay. but i mean it's three it's three up to three instances oh yeah which is great absolutely i mean absolutely. the whole first strike three three i don't you might not be swinging with this i one. feel like this is a commander you're just going to keep back maybe the first strike is protection for it on the block yeah but... it could be or also again like if someone only has like you know a couple of creatures in play you might be able to swing at them yeah. and justify it potentially but yeah you probably not, have other ways i'm not to get too them. interested in the first strike but i love the rest of the card absolutely all right, moving on. Other breaches. The brand new one. I don't think you've seen this one either, have you? Breaches no. the Blastmaster. The Blastmaster. A three, three Goblin Pirate with Menace for three mana. And is it when you cast your second spell each turn, you may sacrifice an artifact if you do flip a coin. When you win the flip, copy that spell. You choose to for the copy. When you lose the flip, breaches the Blastmaster deal damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. I I would put this in in, in A. Yeah. I mean, like it's got blue on it. So whereas the other um, what was it, Crark? We had to assume that you would be choosing blue as a second color. Yeah. This I, has got it. I, I the, personally would choose blue, black, probably, but yes. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, this is, yeah. The, it's already the, built in. It's already built in. Um, there's a lot of uh, spell slinger in, the, in these colors, so second spell is going to be something you can satisfy. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to get plenty of treasures in these colors, uh, um, which would, sac you know, give you artifacts to sack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's good. Yeah. I mean, and this is one of those, and I think Wizards are going this way um, with things lately where it's like there is kind of no fail to it. Like, you get a benefit either way. It just depends on what your benefit is. Right. right. Like, it's not like when you flip a coin, you don't get anything out of that. Uh, but you aren't going to get to choose what you want. Unless you do have some ways that you can manipulate. You know, again, coin flips like we talked about, like Crux Iron, like Crux Thumb. Crux Iron Thumb is what I almost said. Uh, but, uh, but basically, yeah, for the most part, it is random on what you're going to be getting. Yeah. It's so funny, like, y when you look at modern cards versus, like, some of the older ones, mm -hmm. it's, like, three mana, three, three with Menace. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, like, That's that like, right there it's is like the base, yeah. Great. Plus all this other stuff on top of it. <laughs> Plus yeah. all this other stuff. Whereas, exactly. like, you look back at, like, uh, you know, um, some of the other ones, it's, like, two yeah. mana for a one, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that no may keywords. or may not have keywords. Exactly. <laughs> but or, yeah. It's a two two, but it has a lot of downside yeah, to right. it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh next up, uh Grish knock brash got, instigator I, I got goro goro and Satoru. am i skipping oh, i'm skipping oh my goodness because i keep i keep scrolling down to get like so i'm ready for the next one and then i end up skipping it thank you for catching me okay you go ahead goro, okay goro. goro goro for satoro three color our first three color i think mm -hmm. uh for uh so three mana for three four uh whenever one or more creatures you control that entered the battlefield this turn deal combat damage to a player create a five five red dragon spirit creature token with flying and then for two mana you can give your creatures haste until end of the turn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, super, super, super good. Yeah, I, I would say solid A. I would, yeah, definitely. I'm up there with you. I'm definitely up there, probably A A plus. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very solid. It is one that, yeah, again, like if you have one extra combat spell, your opponents are in trouble because you're just like, oh, okay, these dragons just came into play. Oh, great, they just entered. Okay, I'm gonna. Well, I guess you need to be able to give them haste and that kind of stuff too. But you, this can give haste. I mean, it, it, like, I, they'll I swing again. They can yeah, give you too. It, it it satisfies mm -hmm. what you would need. I like actually that they made haste cost two in this mm -hmm. instance, just because like yeah. It's not like, I mean, it can be really busted, yeah, yeah. but I mean, like it's already getting, you're getting Grixis colors, mm. you know? So it's giving you three colors. It's a three, four for three mana. Again, talking about vanilla stats, mm. that's already pretty solid. Yep. And then on top of it, you can, you know, give your creatures haste. Yeah. It's a very, very solid A. Yeah. Absolutely. Bumping, bumping up on S, but I don't think it's quite to an S tier, but it's really, yeah. really good. Well, I mean, even like literally this plus a bunch of raging goblins. Like if you get this out early enough and then you're oh, like, yeah. okay, I got hasty creatures and then I just swing and I hit and I make three, five, five flying dragons oh, yeah. on turn three. It can four. get, yeah. You dump yeah. out a bunch of tokens, yeah. drop this. You don't have to attack with this. So all you got to do is. Oh, you got to have those tokens enter on that. Yeah. Whatever that turn is. Yeah. So you set your board yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drop this for five mana total. You drop this and give the creatures you have control that, have, you know, haste or whatever, mm. if, you, if they need it. They probably don't because you've already got a board state. You know, yeah. I mean, by turn five, you should be yeah. able to be attacking pretty yep. good. Well, you need them to enter the mouth for that turn still, but yes, yeah. So basically, a little bit of setup, you get an absurd amount of value from this. And again, like if you have like double strike type effects too, or again extra combat, you're getting this again and oh, yeah. again and again. And a warstorm surge could be nice too with it. It's in the right colors. It is in the right colors for what it wants to do. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, now to Grish Knock Brash Instigator. Grish Because I know I know how to say Lord of the Rings names. Uh, a one one <laughs> Gimli. Got it. <laughs> a one one Goblin Soldier for three mana in red. Whenever it enters the battlefield, a mass orcs two. When you do, until end of turn, gain control of target, not ledger creature to controls with power less than or equal to the amassed army's power. Untap the creature gains haste until end of turn. Go for it. I, I don't know. I, a D. I think that's pretty fair. It's, uh, it's a three mana one one. Yeah. And it is a one one. I, I didn't. I didn't even realize that. Kind of. I was just reading it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like, already not. Su I mean, like, it's vulnerable, right? Yep. And then a mass orcs. I'm just kind of. I don't know. Like, it was fun in the limited environment, yep. but I just don't really. One creature getting taller, you yeah. know, that's a very um, glass cannon approach. 100%. It's very vulnerable. It's a single creature. Yeah, a single um, bounce spell will get rid of that. Exactly. It's yeah. a token. Yep. And so, um, yeah, and then non-legendary creature. Yeah. Most of the time that, with that this, you're, Yeah, most of the time you're... And there's not a lot of ways to use and abuse ETVs with this. Yeah. So, yeah, most of the time you're going to be, like, stealing a two-power creature that is, you know, the, the opponent's. The best case scenario is this plays out like Brian Stoudarm. Yep. where where but the, the and that's a best case scenario of a worse card because yep. brian you can gain life off of it you can have you're in boros colors mm. so you got all these other like benefits to you know you can play sarah avatar <laughs> exactly <laughs> whereas this is back. basically just i steal your tiny creature blight steel let's just say blight steel and i blight steel with this Oh, yeah, because it's got to be the army's... Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, get, you terrible. potentially could get that army up there, but probably not. Yeah, so, okay, so let's say it's a five mana. Let's say, like, sure, you, you've got sure. an army already. This amasses another two yeah, onto yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get a five mana creature. A five power and creature, then, yeah. And then you cast Fling and, yeah. and, and use that. Yep. I don't even know if this is a D. Let's leave it in D. We'll give it a D. There's only one D, right? It's, it's definitely better than the Aki Slinger, I guess, because it does it's something. Better, but, it's but, playable. Yes, it's and playable, but it's bad. It's very, yeah, it's yep. very mediocre. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. All right. Have I scrolled too far? Grum Gully, is that correct? Grum that Gully. Right? You got it. All right. <laughs> All right. Why don't you read this one? Grum Gully, the generous. Have some mushrooms. <laughs> three mana in gruel colors for a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, each other non-human creature you control enters the battlefield with additional plus one plus one counter on it. Mm -hmm. 
I like this card a lot. Yeah. Um, it's just a like a value piece. Yeah. I think it's a solid C. Maybe B. Let's put it B. Let's I'm, I'm going to argue for a B simply because B. simply because Non-human. this is very easy infinite with specific cards. With, yeah, it uh, can combo. With, pers- with persist creatures, essentially. Yeah. If you have, any, and there's only so many persist creatures in these colors, luckily. But yeah, if you have a persist creature and you have a free sacrifice out, that is infinite because you are getting yeah. an extra counter on it. If it's not human, I should say. And but a non-human creature. I but mean, yeah. there's so many instances like to to satisfy that prompt. Yep. You're right. B, I'm, I'm with you though. All yeah. day long. B. Like without without that kind of combo kind of thing, it's just a good value. But yeah, with that that it kind of pushes it up. And it's a three three like. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It's that's Better not nothing some, for for some again for some of the older goblins. There's a lot of legendaries. A lot of old goblins are legendary too. Like, hey, uh, it's above curve for that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's above Versus curve. The, Right. Yeah. I guess the last one was Lord of the Rings, which was like last year. So that was a one, one for three. The nice thing of, um, about this is it's a, it, it's three mana, so it's like you can get this out probably a turn or you know or two mm. early, and still be like rolling you know on on getting out all of these creatures. Like mm. this will start triggering off of those. You know, it yep. isn't like a five mana commander where you're sure. like all of my creatures are already out. Yep. I'm not gonna get those counters. A hundred percent. So yeah. yeah like well, this is this is the part of the setup. This is the setup for you. The other things are the additions and then you can have other things that can really play off those counters. Yeah. Too. Right. Absolutely. Love it. Next up, have I scrolled too far? Gut. Gut Two nope. true soul zealot. Good. I'm doing better now. A two <laughs> two goblin shaman for three mana and red. Choose a background. So again, I'm gonna assume you get well, backgrounds are one other color, I believe. Yep. I'm assuming you're not picking a red one. I'm assuming you get another color. Okay, let's just make that assumption. So you get one other color plus this. Sure. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature or an artifact. If you do, create a four one black skeleton creature token with menace that's tapped and attacking. So I'm gonna assume black is what I will assume for like my assessment of this, but you can assume whatever you'd like. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I guess you don't necessarily have to be black. I don't remember what all the backgrounds I don't either. are off the top of my I'm head. Just, I'm thinking about the, there's one but, that's like whenever a creature or artifact hits the graveyard, like ping every opponent for one. Yeah. That's kind of what I would assume with this because it's kind of like aristocratic. Yeah, styling. you're probably going to want Yeah, you're going to want And I think that is a black one. So, mm. yeah, you're, you're going to want probably something that benefits like some sort of fodder. There's probably uh, a much strategy. better one that like people were like, no, it's this one. It's this one. It's this one. I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking about that one. I, don't know. I really like that it's creature or artifact that you yep. can sacrifice. Um, and then a 4-1 skeleton creature that's ta- with menace that's mm-hmm. tapped and attacking. I mean, that's not nothing. Like, that's not nothing. Even if it dies. like yeah. bigger lightning bolt, um, essentially. Yeah, so I would probably put this in. Well, the fact that you can choose a background and get a second color, mm-hmm. I'd put it in B. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, and I think another thing that does help this one out versus other commanders that are kind of similar to it is that this says whenever you attack. It doesn't say, like, whenever this attacks. So right. you don't have to actually send your commander into, into danger. You can send something else. If your skeleton survived last time, you can send a skeleton into danger again. So. Exactly. There you go. All right. I believe this is – oh, no, this is not one of yours. Cranko. No. Baron of Tin Street, not one of your goblins. No, it's not. It's not, but I probably will have to build him. <laughs> there you go. All right, read this one out, please. All right, he's a three mana, uh, three three with haste. Um, tap, sacrifice an artifact. Put a plus one plus one counter on each goblin you control. Whenever a go- uh, an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay red. If you do, create a one one goblin creature token with he- that ga- it gains haste until end of turn. Okay. This feels like an A to me. All right. It, it's got all of the components to make it happen right away when it hits the battlefield because yep. it has haste. You got to imagine by turn three with any Cranko deck, you're going to have some fodder out there right away. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that it kind of gives you that artifact payoff, that's what I like about this is it's not just like, oh, you got to sacrifice a creature to mm. do something. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's an A. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely... With other goblin decks, you might not have like the going tall. This one does give you the going tall. It is a little bit more work than like the original Cranko to go wide, but right. you can still go wide. You just got to get like treasures into players like that. Sacrifice those. You have to pay to actually make that one one, but like you're sacrificing treasures, you get the mana. And I don't know. I guess the original Cranko is a three three. I was gonna say like I, I think he's gotten stronger over the years, but I guess just it, the same. I guess. <laughs> same. But you know what? That that haste is awesome. Yep. Yep. That's that's really good. All right. Uh, Cranko, Tin Street came in. Apparently, Cranko was strong, got weaker, and then got stronger. Yeah. Power yeah. toughness wise. Cranko, Tin Street, Ken, Ten Street King. But this is yours, I believe, right? This I is, have this deck. So why don't you read this one out there? I love this deck. Uh, so it's a three mana, one, two. Yeah. Why? Cranko's just like, but, uh, well, it, wasn't it, hitting the gym. I know for a why bit. They, they 
put him down. But yeah, maybe he's like, this is his weight loss. So his, his <laughs> weight loss resolution. You know, he's like, oh, I got to get back in shape. This is February. It was just January. Yeah, he was already like a month into like the working out plan. This should be called Cranko's new resolution. Yeah. Cranko's just <laughs> jogging every day, you know, yeah. eating kale bars. Tin and, yeah. Street resolution. There you go. Uh, fulfiller. Um, whenever Cranko, uh, Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and then create a number of one, one red goblin creature tokens equal to Cranko's power. This thing, um, I mean, I want to like, because it's a pet deck of mine, mm -hmm. I want to say S tier. I'm going to say A tier because it's not quite an S, an S tier, sure. but this thing is so fun. Um, oh my gosh. And it's like, it's, it's low cost, pretty low costed being a three mana mm -hmm. commander. Um, and you get some equipment, some pump spells on this thing and it immediately starts doing the thing. Yep. So, um, and there's some like yeah. janky weird, like is mob mentality on the card. There's like, there's certain like auras that are yeah. like really weird that work well with it. It's like oh, also when like, you, when it attacks, like you get like plus plus one on a turn for like each other creature control. So yep. like combos with itself kind of weird with that. There's like the, it's um, not combo, but Tenzo Go Goto's mall. Yeah. That's like the, if it's legendary and it's red, it gets, yep. you know, punk. plus three. Yeah. Like all these different little, and I uh, like, yeah, for my deck, I went through and I found a lot of like inexpensive, um, uh, artifact equipments that um that like like what is it bone smasher or whatever it's like it just Bones pumps off. it yeah pumps it two yeah plus two plus zero yeah who cares i just yeah. want his power to go up yes, you know 100 to me that's two more goblins Wait, it only or costs three, one to equip. i think that yeah. one costs one to equip too then too yeah it's a cheap equip cost that, that was basically how i built my deck was like kind of voltron but it goes wide so oh, it's yeah. like people don't know like what to deal with they're yeah. like oh it's you've gone wide with goblins yeah we need to deal with all these I goblins. Stopped your but we commander, also... but there's 20 <laughs> goblins. Yeah, in play. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's a fun, it's a fun deck. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, next up, Pashlik Mines, a two-two Gobbo warrior for two and a red. Whenever another goblin you control dies, one damage to any target. Pay three and a red. Sacrifice one goblin. Make two. Yeah, the second ability on this is really weird. I've never, I've only ever used this in goblin decks. Mm -hmm. um, for that reason, I think it's probably a C. Okay. Um, I think there's like, obviously you, you get a bunch of goblins out mm -hmm. then you have sack outlets, you know, this thing pings and deals a lot of damage. Sure. It requires the ability to get a lot. You like, it requires Krenko yeah. in order to make, so it's like almost like this is better in the 99, in my opinion, than as the captain of the helm, because four mana sacrifice a goblin to create two. Mm -hmm. So basically four mana, four mana, wait, make one goblin, make basically one, one goblin. damage. Yeah. Essentially. Uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, it's. C, I would even say maybe it's a D. I'd say it's probably C compared to the D, but <laughs> let's put it in C just because let's you assume could... let's assume that you're gonna be doing a, a, like there's plenty of spells out sure. there that create goblins and yeah. other things, so you'll have some fodder. Um, but it's definitely C because it's whenever another it or another goblin mm -hmm. you control die, so you have to play goblins with this as well. Yeah, 100. percent So um, it's C. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Uh, Ruck, Hexgold, Nabber. Why don't you read that one? Rook? Ruck? Uh, Rook? Rook? That sounds better to me. Rook. I Go like for it. Rook. Go for it. All right. Um, three mana, two, two, with trample and haste. <laughs> Love <laughs> Just it. Just the keywords on it. <laughs> I right. will run you over. <laughs> <laughs> the, the art on this is awesome. It's really cool. It's super sweet. It's really cool. Um, whenever an equipped creature you control other than Rook, Hexgold, Nabber, attacks or dies, you may attach all equipment attached to that creature to rook um that's cool mm -hmm. it gets around the equip cost and stuff like that um for some of the things um i don't know i feel like this is like a solid c okay it's just i mean like it's not bad but yep. it's like okay so then you dump all the equipment onto this guy but do you do you necessarily want all the equipment on him? And if so, you probably would have put it on him to begin with. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's so kind of it's, it's kind of like a weird push and pull. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why would you throw? Where's the on benefit? Him? Like, if there was something like attach all the equipment to him and then mm. create this many goblin creatures or something else, like like doing some other thing to like to me, it's just like he's just a magnet for a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, yeah, it's not ta terrible. It basically forces you to play Voltron. Yeah. Which usually when you play Voltron, you you're not necessarily putting your, you're, you're not, not spending equipment costs on yeah. other creatures to then bring it back to your guy. Yeah. It's kind of a weird push pull. There's like, there's some like interesting things you could do with it. Like some yeah. like tricksy plays kind of thing, but also it's like the best thing to do with this part is suited up with a bunch of things anyways. So. Yeah. Yep. It w if, if it, or if it had like, 
if he dies, you can move all the equipment to another creature. Yep. You know, yeah, it was kind of like um, it's like like an Ozolith essentially, kind of, yeah. but like for like equipment could be right. a little better. Because it's because ultimately, once all the equipment's on him, he's the target. He's gonna get taken out like mm. a Voltron strategy. Yep. It's the the same vulnerability. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, yep. You see. still have to pay equip costs, whether you're equipping to something else or to this. Right. Essentially, okay. you get basically one free equip for any equipment that was out equipped to a creature yes so basically you already paid the equip cost yes unless you're running unless the there's like dwarf those like that the does kite or a kite sail whatever yeah, some of the mono like red cards feel like that, attaches yeah yeah or um, like that yeah yeah i mean you're in mono red you're in the right color for it to get around equip cost mm. but i still and just i'm not too strong on it yep okay all right uh slime foot and squee a three three fungus goblin in jund Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, create a one-one green sapling creature token. One inch on color. Sacrifice a sapling. Return it from return it and up to one other target creature from graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. So a repeatable reanimation spell in a way. Yeah, I I mean even with the activate as a sorcery, I would say this is an A. I'd say so too, compared to all the other goblins. Essentially, when it comes you to get commanders. three color. Yep. And you're in a reanimation color. Mm -hmm. Like black likes stuff coming out of the graveyard yeah, red can get things in the graveyard pretty easily yep with, you can uh, play a lot of discard stuff yeah yep. i think there's all the makings of the engine mm -hmm. on this commander and it's vanilla stats are great too so i mean mm -hmm. yeah i think it's a, just a really good a the one thing i would i definitely agree the one thing i would urge new players with this one to be careful with is that you need to have a sapling in play and yes when this enters the battlefield uh or attacks you get one but like you can't always count on that being the one that you have. So maybe you can include yeah. a couple other ways to make saplings in this deck because you don't want your commander to stuck in your grave or be like, oh no, someone dealt with my sapling and now my commander stuck forever. Yeah, you're definitely playing uh sap not sapling tribal, but like sapling tokens. Yep. Yeah. As like a you, decent You could have like Avenger of Zendik. No, that makes plants. No. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever um, the ones that make saplings are. But yeah, there are there are, there yeah, are plenty of Verdant and, Verdant Force. And they're all in green. So yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, that you're gonna be running a, a good sapling package with this, you should. You, and then basically red gets the big baddies mm -hmm. into your graveyard, and then black, can black gets. But yeah. Get, yeah, there's also big baddies in all of them essentially. But yeah, there's big baddies in all of them. Yeah. Yep, but it's cool. yeah, it's cool. All right, a tier sounds good to me. All right, slow bad is back and bad now. Iron Goblin. I mean, not bad like stats wise. I'm saying like bad like evil. Yeah. Uh, three three Phyrexian Goblin Artificer, which barely fits. I love when like they shrink the text so much that it barely fits on the line. They're like, uh, yeah, Phyrexian really, really threw that off. <laughs> All right, for two and a red tap, sacrifice an artifact. Add an amount of red equally sacrifice artifacts made of value. Spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. Yeah, I hate that little last bit. Yeah, that does limit it a little bit. It limits it. Um, and the fact that you have to sacrifice an artifact, ideally with a high cost, yep. in order to benefit. Mm -hmm. And granted, you're converting colorless mana into colored mana, but yep. but restricted colored mana too. Yeah, I just this feels like a C to me. Okay, that's about where I would say I do this too. Yeah, the restrictions kind of like limited quite it's a bit. It's really narrow. It's there, very narrow. There are setup things that you can do with it. Like again, like you can get certain big artifacts in play. Like I'm thinking uh, like Spine of Ishsa, right? Which wants to be sacrificed yeah. so and get back to your hand, like that kind of thing too. And you get mana out of it. Yeah, there's just like limitations to it though. Yeah, it's like the the ideal scenario, right? Is you're getting like a, uh, um, like a like a kind of a mediocre high costed artifact mm -hmm. turning it into something that you can dump into like a burn spell yep. or something like that i mean you can only spend it for artifact spells and activate abilities oh, yeah that's right so yeah so it's limitation. like well, yeah so why would you even you just you can like, the, well you can red. utilize like maybe like some affinity artifacts essentially that have like a high yeah. mana value that you can get out very cheaply and then you can sacrifice those to get like bigger ones out so yeah you can kind of chain into bigger artifacts with this so, like there is there is like a play pattern with this that can be decently powerful but like in like the limitations it takes a while to set up and also like you got to really kind of swing for the fences to hit that home run. Yeah. I just don't, I don't know. I'd rather play like so many other artifact, like cheat artifacts into play commanders than this, than this when it comes Fair to enough. the front. Yeah. I would say C low C low C. All right. Easy enough. C minus. All right. C uh, squee goblin nabob. No, I got dubious monarch. I went you too far ahead? again. What am I doing? I mean, they're the same mana cost. So it's yeah, all but, the but, but like I keep this scroll. I'm like, I'm ready for it. I just need to, I'm just to keep <laughs> yeah. hands off of it until we get to it. All right? Slow down, hands Mitch. Off. I'm just gonna move this. This episode's gonna be long enough. Exactly. All right. <laughs> Squee dubious monarch, a two two goblin noble with haste for three mana and red. Whenever it attacks, create a one one red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. You may cast Squee dubious monarch from your graveyard by paying three and a red and exiling four other cards from your graveyard rather than paying its mana cost. I love 
the the very last bit there about mm-hmm. ha- getting it getting it back and kind of cheating on on uh, commander tax. Sure. Um, the fact that it only creates one goblin creature token though that's mm. tapped and attacking, and it has to attack to do it. Yep. Is just so such a bummer. Yep. You know, like there's no like conditional like whereas with Krenko it's like he gets a a, a tiny bit bigger and mm. then you create it's snowballs right. Yes. It's slow at the beginning and then it gets big big yep. big. So this to is me, the same. Yeah. The same. To me, even with the four mana, and you have to exile four other cards from your graveyard. Yep, and you might not have them. Now, granted, the, Mono Red doesn't really care so much. I mean, Flashback's a thing, but like it doesn't typically, typically. care about getting things back out of the graveyard. But mm. still, I, I would put this in D, low D, in my Sounds opinion. Sounds good to me. All right, D tier it is. Actually, I, I moved the, the mouse thing away, and then I was like, well, I got to reach really far to actually do this. So I'm going to put it back here. <laughs> Just going to try and remember not to go too far each time. Goodness gracious. All right. Now, Squee Goblin to Bob. All right. Why don't you read that one for me? All right. It's three mana, one, one. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return Squee Goblin to Bob from your graveyard to your hand. Okay. Um, I mean, this thing is like a CEDH. Uh, I know there's I think CEDH. It's the other Squee, it. actually. It's the other, oh, the Immortal. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right, the right. other Squee um, H one. But this one is definitely I a, said a, squee-edh. something. <laughs> squee-edh. This is a squee. But they usually staple. are in like food chain decks, right? The other um, one. Is. This yeah, the one other is one not. Is. I don't believe. Yeah. Because this is just like you got to get your upkeep. You're just bringing it back to your hand. There's no abusing that because it's just one time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like this is an F. It's not a good I, commander. I think it's an F. It's just uh, it's, I can get this creature back. Yeah. Cool. It's not even really like a strong combo piece because i was thinking of the better of no. the other squee we'll get to the next one which is i believe i didn't scroll too far squee the immortal squee the immortal there we go all right is that three squeeze in a row that is three squeeze in a yep. row that's funny They're all, all right same so a two one goblin that costs three mana in red you may you may cast it from your grave or from exile so this is the one that is combo centric yeah this is the one though that i mean i'm sure there are probably ways to combo with it in just mono red but i don't know if there are because food chain is the combo that i know right. and that is in green so this cannot utilize it as in the 99 amazing for those kinds of decks but yeah. as a commander itself i don't think it has a combo i know let me know the comments if I'm wrong if i'm wrong on that no and i think that I, I i i agree with you and i think that as a commander this is an f like it yep. just is not if, there's if, no if there's not combo pieces to it like if food chain was in red right you could do some things with it but even if it's like okay so you're gonna cheat on commander tax i mean okay. food, food chain goes infinite with that you get well command. yeah yeah no i'm just saying like you know as a commander oh in yeah, mono yeah, yeah, red, yeah 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 you know okay so the the yeah. best case scenario you're getting is um a card that you know you can cheat on commander tax a vanilla two one a vanilla two one mana every it does single nothing time. right yeah. yeah so what i mean gra- granted you've got uh, a wide uh uh canvas to paint mm-hmm. on there you, you go because it doesn't know what it wants to do exactly you can do anything <laughs> you can do anything it's just a very low i mean impact tremors one at a time <laughs> i will get you all give me 39 more times to cast my commander and i will get you i swear yeah, or you can full try you're like all right i'm starting off at two power but i'll get there <laughs> yeah i just it's enough okay easy enough i agree sorry right. squee sorry squee sorry sorry two of the three squeeze which finished at f and the other squeeze finished at d <laughs> All right, Togo, Goblin, Weaponsmith. Why don't you read that one for me? Oh, man. Okay, so it's a three mana, two, two. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a colorless equipment artifact creature or artifact token named Rock with equipped creature has pay one tap, sacrifice Rock. This creature deals two damage to any target and, and equip one. Um, and it has partner. Yep. Um, the so assumption gonna... here is that you're going landfall, so it's going to probably partner with something like um, something. Kodama or something like yep. that. So with that assumption, because mm-hmm. that's pretty much the way that it goes, this is, is an S tier. Like, it can be an S tier. All right. Um, that's what I would put it in. Yeah, I mean, I think my, my gut said more A, but I guess, I mean, Kodama is, is very, very powerful. So, yes. Yeah, so I'm assuming, like, that you're going the... landfall and you're doing, like, that. Yeah, it, it it that then it just becomes like this big the big snowball. Yes, but. and giving me free artifact like it's not even the fact that like it, it's an equipment that you can like utilize it to chuck at people essentially, but like just more so like just even getting that just an artifact is valuable. Like being able to say like, okay, I have a number of artifacts and play spells. I've got you know sacrifice artifacts for other effects. Essentially, I've got like tap artifacts to deal damage with, like your Braithor grid that kind of stuff too. So yeah, or, or like um, clock of omens like tapping to untap other artifacts. So. Yeah, yeah, there's I mean, a way to use the artifacts other than the pinging. Oh, 100%. You know, like yes. the affinity for tokens, affinity for artifacts. There's yep. all these other little like side things. I just, uh, anytime I've ever seen a Togo deck play out, They're pretty it's good. played super strong. Yep. 
I agree. I mean, I would probably put it as a low S, high A. Oh, that's fair. Oh, absolutely. Well, like, I think the other, the other commander typically that carries most of the weight, essentially, of, like, the power scaling of it, essentially. Yeah. But, like, this is a really good complement to that. And, again, just having partner inherently, again, that's kind of the thing with goblins, right? Most goblins are just red. So just literally having one extra color is a huge boost. Having two extra colors potentially is even better. The the hardest thing with mono red goblins is ramp. Yep. You know that's like the ramp and card draw. Yep. They're they're, they're colors that are that that struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Um. And so being able to give yourself access to a color that just inherently gives you cultivate or uh, ramp and growth. Yep. Or just any of those spells. Will supercharge you. Yeah. It's really they're really good. Absolutely. All right. Moving on, as long as I didn't scroll down scroll too far. No, we're good. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Tuck, tuck, the Explorer. A 1-1 one, one Goblin for three mana with haste, and that's it. No, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, when it dies, put a 5-5 five, five Legendary Colorless Goblin Golem Artifact Creature token named Tuck, Tuck, the Returned onto the battlefield. So, bigger Tuck, Tuck. Um, yeah, you get a 1-1 one, one that can turn to a 5-5. Five, five. It's an F. I think it's an F. I think so. All right. Because yeah. it's, 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 it it's, it's a hasty 1-1 one, one for three mana. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's it. And then if it happens to die... You, you get a 5-5. Five, you five. can have sacrifice outlets. Right, but d why do you want to kill your commander and then have to pay more to cast it? Just because you get a 5-5 five, five out yeah, of the deal? Five, five. <laughs> no, it is an F. All right, fine. I mean, I, I, I agree that it's, it's definitely either D or F. It's probably an F. You're probably right. I think it's an F. <laughs> it's just never going to... Because what are you going to build around? I would... You know? Let's see. Okay, okay, here we go. And um, it's a legendary colorless gold. That's goal. a good point. So even that's if that's point. still around... Yeah, I can't and populate it. I mean, I can't... Okay, put, here we go. Got it. Warstorm <laughs> Surge, Terror of the Peaks, uh, Sacrifice <laughs> Outlet, Populate Effects. Done. <laughs> there we go. Damage doublers, so damage many, triplers. So many, so many layers. in that machine <laughs> hey, at right least there. this has layers compared to the other squeeze that are in this, which have no layers. <laughs> Mitch is going to take it on himself. I am making Tuck Tuck viable. Tuck Tuck is going to be the most viable deck. Print the, I'm gonna, the I'm gonna, t-shirt. I'm going to destroy an LGS <laughs> with Tuck Tuck the, the Explorer with my custom five, drawn five, token. Five goblin, a legendary colorless go Absolutely. goblin golem yep. artifact yep. creature. I'm going to go destroy tuck -tuck. it. Your local LGS, look out. I'm coming with a Tuck Tuck deck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. All right. Here we go. Next up, Vile Smasher the Fierce. Why don't you read that one for me? OG Vile Smasher. Right OG. Here. Three mana, two, three in Rakdos Colors. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, Vile Smasher, the Fierce, deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost at an uh, opponent chosen at random, and it has partner. Yep. So this is I'm probably the only goblin that actually has up to four colors. Yeah. I believe it's the only goblin. Actually, and ironically, I want to point this out really quick while putting this together. I realize that there are no goblins that have white in them at all. It's just all everything else. Yeah, because yeah, Slimeswood and Squee get you to green. Actually, technically, the partner ones get you there. And technically, yes, the partner ones could get you to well, white, but like... Well, Grumgully is green. Yes, you're right. Grumgully is green. Yep. All right. There we go. So yeah, like technically, all the goblins, uh, or all the colors are represented except for white within goblins yep. without partner combinations. Um, Built correctly, this is an S. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's it's insane. I've never seen even an uh, unoptimized version of this deck not do very well. Yeah. I mean, if you're just chucking random damage at people. It stumbles into a win. Yep. You, <laughs> you know, definitely like... can. You definitely can. <laughs> it, it, Again, it, it's each a spell. It's only for a spell, but it's each turn. So your opponent's turns as well. So yeah. Have fun it's with very that. good. Okay. Next up. Zozu the Punisher, a 2 2 Goblin Warrior for three mana in red. Whenever a land enters battlefield, Zozu the Punisher does two damage to that land's controller. The worst thing about this is it's mono red. Yes. So you're not really going to be able to get a ton of, uh, you know, landfall out there. And for me, that makes it uh, a D at best. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it is it is one that, like, you're kind of counting on your opponents to, like, ramp a ton to hurt themselves. Right. Like, and if they aren't playing green, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah, and if they are, they're gonna be like, "All right, priority one, take care of Zozu." <laughs> I mean, th that's the thing is, it's gonna, just gonna make everybody angry. Yeah, and that, that's that's the other thing about this too. Yeah. It just draws a lot of hate, and yep. it doesn't it 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 hurts you too. So yep. it's like I don't know, it's just not. It's just not a. It's I, hard to get any benefits fun, off of that. It's just not a very fun commander to build. That's fair too. Right? You know, Unlike like, Tuck Tuck, which is very fun. Of <laughs> I'm a big Tuck Tuck fan now. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're not a fan of Tuck Tuck, are you a fan of uh, Ben Ben? Ben Ben. Aki Hermit <laughs> was wearing like a squid on his head. Yeah, it's just such a that. weird art. Weird. And he's also. I don't think he has pants on. <laughs> I think those are pants. I'm pretty sure those are pants. Comment below, are those pants? <laughs> I don't know. All right. It kind of looks like he's uh, going to the bathroom on that wall. I don't wall think so. Caught. I don't think that's the case. I think he's like drawing on the wall. I'm right. like surprised that you came in though. Still. Let's like, start a debate. What is Ben Ben doing in that art? I think just drawing on the wall. Like, I don't know. Does, the, the, does the flavor text tell us? Some hockey thought of Ben Ben as a commie of trickery in disguise. They hunted him 
uh, in the maze of Warrens, often falling prey to his traps. So someone's hunting him in the maze. Sure. There you go. And he makes traps. All right. 1-1 one, one <laughs> Goblin Shaman. With, we heard the flavor text before the actual card <laughs> for four mana. Tap deals damage target attacking creature equal number of untapped mountains you control. Uh, I'll be nice and give it a D. <laughs> it's better than Tuck Tuck. <laughs> it's Poor a tuk, one tuk. one for four mana. Yes, that's really bad. You have to tap it, so it does. It doesn't even get haste. It doesn't get haste. You know, in a modern card, it would be a three three, and it would have haste. Oh, 100 percent. Oh yeah, and it wouldn't count untapped mountains; it'd just be mountains. It would be just mountains. The fact that your mountains have to be untapped too is a big deal, yeah. actually. Yeah, like, so you have to you have, have to choose you to have like to have not utilize your mana. Four mana plus. However many mounts. For the first well, I mean, if it has haste for the first time, yeah. But like later on, yeah, you just have to you have to be playing a lot of instant speed things because you have to like And it deals it to the target attacking creature. Yeah. So you gotta not do anything on your turn. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You have to and be playing. And then you just basically are basically like playing pillow blue. Fort. You're playing blue, but in red. You're like, okay, I have to play instant speed on my opponent's turns, but like only right before my turn is and really hope I can get a lot of value out of people attacking and destroying their creatures with this. Is this an F? I think that I if think you've got making... Tuck Tuck, if you got Tuck Tuck in the F, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, this is, is an F. F. This is an F. This is an F. I'd say if Tuck Tuck's down there, this is an F. Yeah, like even just like, thinking through the scenarios of like what would be the best case scenario of this deck, Goblins... it's just holding up re your mountains and doing nothing. Yeah. Just to threaten a creature from <laughs> yes. attacking you. Well, no, because I'm also going to have uh, another card out there that can untap this once, so I can threaten yeah, two right. creatures. They just better not be bigger than the number of untapped uh, mountains I have. Was it Thornbite Staff? There or you one go. Of the, yeah, yeah. Something like that. I guess Thornbite oh, yeah. Staff would auto untap this one. I take you, you there could, you go. I mean, you could do the auto. You, you could do the. You could get the infinite loop of of you I know mean, unta tap untapping it, but you gotta have a lot of build around to get that. And you'd going. have, to, and it wouldn't be infinite because it would really I mean, it's it would based on require creatures. the creatures dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's an F. Uh, that's fine with me. <laughs> Art A plus though. <laughs> Squid on the head, drawing on the wall. Just surprised that you're there. Right. I don't think he's wearing pants. <laughs> I, think he <laughs> I think he is. All right. Breaches, brazen, plunder, why don't you read this one? This one is wearing pants, confirmed. He is. He's wearing breeches. Breeches. <laughs> uh, four mana, three, three, with menace. Mm. Whenever uh, one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, exile the top card of each of those opponents' libraries. You may play those cards until end of turn. You may spend mana as though it were any color to cast those spells, and it has partner. Okay. Lots um, of goblins with partner. Lots of people are like, you know what's a good decision in my life? Partnering up with that guy. And that guy's like, ah. <laughs> The fact that this has partner um, gives you the right colors to really, you know, benefit from, well, more pirates, pirates. and also. Bricks um, is most likely then if you're going pirates. Yeah. And also the, um, you know, stealing cards from your opponents. So mm -hmm. uh feels like a solid B. Yeah, that's fair. B B plus. Yeah, I'd say high. Yeah. What B, did we put that other theft one at? The other the uh, the D tier uh, one from Lord of the Rings. Or was it D? Was that what we put it at? The the one from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, about stealing your it, it, because stealing off the top of the library or stealing creatures. Yeah, stealing off the top of the library. Off the top of the library. What other creature does that? that oh, uh, original Grenzo. Oh, sorry, oh, the second Grenzo. Second Grenzo. B. Uh, he's also B. Okay. This is above that. Okay. But Do it's, you want to move it to A or no? Yeah, let's throw it in A. It is an A. Let's assume that you can get you'll get two more colors into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's blue pirates, there's black pirates. Yep. You know. Um, yeah. A. Let's throw it okay. A. Okay. Easy enough. All right. Ib Halfheart, Goblin Tactician. Today I just learned again, I looked at some of the arts today too, and I just learned that Ib is just like looking like sideways. <laughs> like his eyes and he's got his tongue like, out. They're like going different directions. His I tongue's love out. Ib might be my favorite goblin. It's a art. really cool one. It's just because he's it? got the hat and, he, and the, 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 the like the goblin go artwork. goggles. You don't have an Ib deck, do you? No, okay. I don't I don't think I would build this. Uh four Why? mana three two. Whenever another goblin you control becomes blocked, sacrifice it. If you do, it deals four damage to each creature blocking it. Sacrifice two mountains, create two one one red goblin creature token. So this is a really good in the ninety nine. True. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a viable commander commander. The sacrificing two mountains to make two red goblins is it's, way too, it's pretty high. That's a, that's not, a terrible not too many cost. ways to use and abuse that. I'd red. rather pay four mana yeah. for one 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 and keep my mountains. If this, <laughs> had, if this had partner, you could like partner with green and then get have a lot of like sure. graveyard like land crucible land. worlds. Or yeah, something I mean like you can still get yeah. crucible lords. Yeah, uh, but yeah, could. but like you could get like uh, splendor, not splendor reclamation. Whatever the ones are that like gets them. Is splendor reclamation. I think it might be actually getting lands out of your graveyard back into play. That could help. This creeping renaissance. Hit creeping lands? renaissance gets back to your hand. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. You're right. But yeah. I think Spun, Spun Reclamation is that the one four mana in green that like brings all lands from your back to yeah. 
So yeah, that one, like that kind of stuff yes. could be played. But again, this is not a partner. This is an older card. This is, this is older. This is a reprint, I think, in Jumpstart, right? Pretty this sure. would have partner if it was I think this today. is older. <laughs> but yeah, it's so, I, I love the design. Okay, so what where are you putting this one? Um, Four damage is not nothing. Four damage is nothing. It um, is good block deterrence. It, it, it makes the block deterrence, mm. and you can benefit from things getting through then from mm -hmm. that regard. That's a good point. So, yeah, I'll put this at C. All right. Solid that's, C. That's where I was thinking as well, compared to our previous ones. All right, here we go. Like the OG uh, Goblin Commander, Cranko Mob Boss. You have one of these, I believe. I do. Why don't you go ahead and read that then? I actually have two, but technically only one is the commander, and then the other one's in the other Cranko. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the 99. That's true, that's true, that's true. You have a <laughs> lot of Crankos. You're invested heavily yeah. in the Cranko. Uh, uh, yeah, how can you not? Um, so it's four mana, three, three. Um, tap, create X, one, one red goblin creature tokens, where X is the number of goblins you control. Mm. This is an S. Yeah, I would say that as well. I mean, it, it is probably the strongest go wide goblins mm. commander. One hundred percent. Like all the other go wide goblins, like I mean, you're the Cranko. Like I love your Cranko, your, your other Cranko deck, but like you still have to send your commander into danger to actually get that benefit. This yeah. is like no, 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 no. Sit back. You're not even limited to like once per turn. You can like tap, utilize like a threat. You put effect boots on, on this thing, and yeah, you're, yeah. Do it right away. You can the threat your own going. commander. Do it again, 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 and then just yeah. have like okay, I've got twenty more goblins, forty more goblins, eighty more goblins, and like okay, yeah. what are your opponents gonna do it's about that? Snowballs. Yeah, it's so resilient too. Like, mm -hmm. I'll get board wiped. You know, I, I think I've even bounced back from like two board wipes. Yep. In a game, just and, keep going. And it, like I think it was against Alec, and Alex was like, "Man, those are <laughs> relentless." Again, again, <laughs> again, and if you have like yeah, impact tremors in play or perforos in play gross yeah so you don't I mean, even that's, have to attack that's essentially what you're doing right yeah. you're, you're usually getting you, you get tremors um or perforos mm. or both which is great because then if you have Three. both then, then they're like well, even if damage we get tripper. rid of one they got the other yeah, it but, doesn't matter yeah. no yeah, and then yeah right. you, you literally you could just win without attacking with a single goblin which i don't think any other goblin commander in this can really say yeah. Like you could literally just win with just like, oh, okay, I tap my commander. That's 40 damage to all your faces. Yep. And that is completely reasonable for a Cranko deck to get to. Absolutely it is. Okay. Yep. All right. So S tier. Yeah, I already, threw, I already threw in there. Perfect. All right. Moving on. Mizzix of the Is Magnus, a 2 2 Goblin Wizard for four mana. And is it whenever you cast an in source spell with mana value greater than the number of experience counters you have, you get an experience counter. In source spells you cast cost one less cast for each experience counter you have. This is a really cool, um, like, design because oh, it yeah. brings in like the layers of blue yep. you know and then it also has like you know the the, the red mm -hmm. angle of it um i would put this what do you think b a is it an a i'd say at least a i don't know I, my, my, you think it's an s i yeah. suppose if you I, i'd say like uh, again this is me assuming this is okay i guess assuming the highest level of play in this but i guess that is kind of the casual Assuming casual highest level play, assuming highest highest level play, you're like, okay, extra turn spells. <laughs> like, just like, yeah, if I, can I guess my if you start thinking about that, two mana. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking in that regard. But, I just think about like the fact that you have, in order to get experience counters, yep, they, they, they have to keep bigger. going bigger and bigger. But you and at like, a certain point, you're going to have a ceiling. You have like but, spells, though. And again, this reduces yeah, that's X spells. True. So you yeah, that's true. Those. Let's so put like, it in S. Let's put it in S. This is your, no, you're You're making a case for it. And I have seen some disgusting Mizzix decks. And actually, I don't think I've ever played against a Mizzix deck seen some disgusting ones like i would at least say a plus I'd let's, say let's put an s right up there all right rulik mons warren chief go for it yet another gruel one i didn't for, realize that there we yeah go. this one's a kind of a weird cost in rulik mons i built this one in, in digital as a um kind of a vorthos build oh. all around rulik mons which, Sweet. Was kind of, which was fun Sweet. a story deck um four mana four three three um menace Whenever Rulik Mons attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it on the battlefield tapped. If you didn't put a card onto the battlefield this way, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. Um, it's a fun build. It's uh, nothing really overly busted or anything mm. like that. It just kind of has all the components to its engine. To me, it's solid C, C+. Plus. I think that sounds completely fair. I think I'd go the same. Like, again, like this is one of those where like, some, like, there are certain cards that you can like see the top of your library. Usually blue is more about that, though. Like, so, like, knowing if you're going to hit that or that or be able to mill something off, like, oh, I really want to land this time, it's mostly just going to be random if you get a goblin or a land. Yeah, and, it, and the thing is, is it's not like you can do anything if it's not a land. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going right back on top. You just yep. know what you're going to draw. You're yep. basically just half scrying. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of like a half scry. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Okay. Moving on. Shatter Gang Brothers. 3-3 three, three in Jund. Goblin Artificer for 
Two and a black, sacrifice a creature, each other player, sacrifice a creature. The exact same thing. I'm just going to not repeat it. Same thing is true for artifacts with red or green with enchantments, essentially. So you can sacrifice those kinds of permanents to get rid of those kinds of permanents. And it's other players. You yes. I mean, you already you, paid the cost. Yeah, you're paying the cost, but yep. then it's basically forcing everybody else to do it. Yep. Which is kind of funny because it could, I guess, no, you couldn't do it that way because, like, it wouldn't just be like each player sacrifices a creature because then, like, you could just not have a creature right. to sacrifice. I guess, creature, you'd have this one. But, anyways, continue. I think that this is an A. Um, I've, I've always seen these being very strong um, decks mm -hmm. to play against. The one thing I will say is if you build this deck, just be ready for the fact that you're just going to be the target. Because if you have things in play, you're going to be taking your opponent's things out in mass. All and... it does is remove, yep. and, and, and it just becomes kind of annoying. So it's like, hmm. that's fine. It doesn't tap. So like you can do, conceivably, you can do all of these. Yep. Or multiple times. Or multiple same. times, yeah. So it's like one of those things where... Just be prepared for the hate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to be. Build, build a strong protection package mm -hmm. in in this in this particular deck um, mm -hmm. for sure. But um, but yeah, I think it's a very solid A. I think so too. Moving on to an unset card, but this one is legal in Commander actually. It doesn't have a little acorn symbol on it. A one one goblin guest for four mana in Gruel. The Space Family Goblinson has trample as long as you've rolled three more dice this turn. Whenever you roll a die, put a counter on it. How much support is there for dice rolling? I don't think all that much. I mean, there's like some. There's some. We got D&D. &D, we got a little bit in Infinity. Yeah. I just think it's a D. I, I just don't think that there's so enough too. going on with this one. Well, and, and the payoff isn't... Four mana, one, one. The payoff isn't big enough, really. You get a counter every single time. You and do it okay. doesn't get trample. You have to roll three or more dice to get trample. Yeah. You know? You'd probably rather just make sure you have like equipment in the deck that can actually get it through versus counting on that. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think it's a D. I think that's fair. All right. Wart, one of the two warts. I believe. I love the art on this one too. Yeah. I, oh my gosh, like the little like this is old school magic. The like, little just like so, dudes, like, weird and... like yeah, the little um, I don't know, like those are little like, goblins, yeah. right? But they just like look like unruly children. <laughs> yeah, they look like people with big ears. Yeah, uh -huh. like just yeah. A three three goblin shaman for four mana in Rakdos fear. Uh, a keyword we have not seen yet so far. I yeah. believe that can't be blocked except by black and artifact creatures. Yep. Uh, beginning of your upkeep, you may return target goblin card from your grave to your hand. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this build is it's probably not focusing so much on goblin tokens, mm -hmm. but more just like low-costed goblins, maybe. Yep. Low-costed solid goblins. So it's kind of a cool like spin on it. Mm -hmm. It's a four-mana 3-3 three, three with fear, which those stats, they, they're they not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's probably a C. Yep. Solid C. That's it. That's completely fair. It's a fun, fun space. Yeah. Yeah. And again, like you just throw all the best goblins in the deck and if they get dealt with, you can get them back yep. slowly over time. But yeah, yeah. you can get them back. All right. Moving on. This is the only goblin deck I've actually built. There we go. But it wasn't a goblin deck. Zada Hedron Grinder. Why don't you read that one? Four mana, three, three. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, copy that spell for each other creature you control that that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. I've built this deck as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you have had like four goblin decks. I guess I have. Goodness gracious. Um, It's an S. It's insane. I'd say it's up there. Yeah. It's, it's, I'd, I was going to go A plus, but yeah, it, it's up there. Like if your opponent does not stop you, you can have an absurd storm, amazing turn. And it just, this just gets better and better, and better with each year now because we start to get those cards are like target creature, like it's plus one, plus one, whatever it is. Make a treasure. There's, oh, okay. Yeah, just yeah, like all the bolt on, just yeah. extra bonus yeah. stuff now. If yeah. you have make a treasure or on a, a card, and it targets a single yeah. creature. That's an absurd card. So yeah. a giant ritual effect with this. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, I've I, every time I've played my deck, it's mm. it's just like the the one thing that I that I don't go grabbing for it every mm. game night is bit solitary. Mm and it can be it can't it, it sometimes it's I, I i'll apologize for the oh, fact yeah, that i'm yeah. like i'm sorry this is just we're doing all it's the also, things it's also the kind of deck where like you can end up finishing when you have your big explosive turn you can end up finishing off like two of the three people at the table yeah yeah like, you're really not necessarily quickly, winning and then they're gone and then you might be out of resources and you're like well we just took out two people let's yeah. play now <laughs> it's definitely been that way yeah where it's definitely like then it's be. 1v1 and you're like okay i hope I get yeah. I hope I can build I don't my get board, board back wiped, up. Yeah, you know, exactly. Something like that. One hundred percent. It is a fun deck though. I like it, it is. a lot. I love Zada again. Like Zada, like they had it rare and then got like discounted to uncommon. I'm like that is not an uncommon effect. Yeah. Anyways, Zada, you should not be disrespecting that way. Next up, one who's never disrespected. Oh my gosh. Let's go for it. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, four uh, five mana for a two two with haste. Tap. Put a token that is a copy of target non legendary creature you control onto the battlefield. That's a token that. 
that token has haste sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step so this is a big combo piece yeah. um i would say like outside of just basically trying to do the the infinite combo Zealous with conscripts, this yeah. it's a c Ooh, you think so because i mean like if you're gonna build it as a commander sure and you're in mono red if I'm, yeah i mean i guess like how many of like the really good dragons are non-legendary i mean there's some i'll just tell you how i would build if i'm not going combo with it which typically is probably what you'd go if you're right. gonna go the most powerful version let's say i'm not going to combo with it i would get a bunch of great etbs like let's say like combustible gear hulk yeah yeah i'd get that i would get a bunch of untap effects with this too like even like threatened effects and then i would just make copies of that or again steal your opponent's best non-legendary creature that has a great etb yeah steal it make a copy of it yeah, that's true you war storm surge kind of things as well tear the peaks that kind of stuff too i guess not for budget for me but that's how i build around it so i'd say that even if you're not comboing i'd still say okay. if, if you're if you're super trying to combo with this yeah oh it's you, an s tier if you're gonna you do, just build a bunch of wheels combo. and then you get to yeah. your Zell, those conscripts and you win oh I mean, yeah yeah if you're just trying to get to the yeah the zealous conscripts yeah. or whatever yeah 100 percent. but i'm with you. i'm with you all right all right you convinced me we can put it we'll put it in a let's okay. put it in a easy peasy all right it's definitely got a price tag of a yes yes it does <laughs> All right. You know, uh, I bought one of those um, and I put it in one of my one of my goblin decks just because I was like, it's a goblin. Yeah. But I didn't like want to run like the combos or anything with yeah. it. And I was like, again, it's a strong card. Yeah. But yeah. For a goblin build. Yeah. Five well, mana. Well, five mana. And then also like so expensive. The best goblins are typically legendary, too. And then you're like, oh, I can't copy that. Right. Oh, I can't copy that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that. It, like I ended up taking it out and just yeah. putting, it, putting it back in my binder. because I was just like, this is actually makes sense. Not so now you're going to build a Kiki Jiki broken combo deck. Got it. Sure. Okay. Sure. Right. Why Easy not? I, I should. I should build that deck. There you go. <laughs> I'll just pump stomp some kids. All right. There you go. All right. Uh, Mizzix Replica Rider, a 4-5 Goblin Wizard with flying. They cost five mana. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may pay one in Is It Colors. If you do copy that spell, you may choose an organ for the copy. If the copy is a permanent spell, gains haste. And at the beginning of your end up sacrifice this permanent. This is cool. It is cool. Um, I've n th like just looking through this list. This was mm -hmm. one of those ones that I had never seen before at, yeah. as well. Um, five mana is super expensive. Yes, it's it is. a four five flyer. Yep. Um, but the rest of it is really fun. I mm -hmm. would put it like B plus territory. Yeah. I'd say it's pretty fair. I'd say it's pretty fair. You can definitely do some really powerful things with it. The fact that the token doesn't stay in play. I think there's a scenario where you could build this in a way that it feels like an A, mm -hmm. um, a high A. Yep. But um, I think just on its face and just kind of an average build, I would assume the the, the five mana cost. For it's the very mana hungry. It's, it's extremely. I mean, granted, it is mm -hmm. four colorless um and and yep. the red which is easier to cast than like kiki jiki but kiki yeah. jiki or in mono red anyways, doesn't matter yeah it doesn't, doesn't matter at all yeah i'd say that it's pretty man hungry with its cost then also again that ability you have to actually pay that on top of like right. okay like i also needed to probably again it's not anywhere other than your hands so like you have to either have like jump start cards or like you know flashback cards or again like off the top of your library with like an impulse draw effect essentially which might already cost mana to do yeah yeah okay next up muxus Goblin Grandy, go ahead. He's a goblin noble. Uh, six mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Um, when Muxus enters the battlefield, reveal the top six cards of your library. Put all goblin creature cards with converted mana cost five or less from among them onto the battlefield. The rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Uh, whenever Muxus attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other goblin you control. So this thing's super expensive. Mm. I want to build this deck. I, yeah. I don't know why I haven't because I have this card. But, like, um, it's a super expensive commander in mono red to, to do. But most goblins, and even the good goblins, are five or less. I mean, I mean yeah. pretty much everything on this list, other than Muxus so other far, Muxus have then. been five or less. Yes. Um, and you're getting the peak, the top six um so and then he also pumps like why did they put that requirement on there like convert me cost five like what are they hoping that you don't hit that six mana i guess like in in like in like a different format it could be like another muxus maybe yeah like there's just one more legendary yeah like what goblins big, what goblins are at six plus like i don't know i have no idea like we should change like i don't like, know i mean like yeah there's like changeling, high cost sure, but goblins i don't know interesting okay yeah i don't know but that is pretty sweet yeah it's pretty um, cool. and it isn't like total converted mana cost of five nope. you know what i mean like but that you would, still would get a lot of value out of it like, a goblin yeah, deck anyways you're like oh okay cool yeah a bunch of one drops or i get whatever. five goblins yeah. great <laughs> yeah no it's super cool um is it a is it a b or an a i feel like it's depend up up to you this is your I, you know i i just get so 
put off by six mana. Yep, commanders. I think the mana cost holds it back. Let's put it in B. Okay. B. B I think is. I think it will feel like an A when it does the thing. Yep. I mean, you can get a lot of value out of it. Again, you could potentially get just, basically six cards red, in your hand. Mono red goblins, your curve is usually so low. Yep. Um, I feel like you're already going to have a board state by the time you get this out. Sure. I, I mean, I've you can attest to it. I've played entire games with five lands. You've played with games my, with less, with I my think. Crankle yeah. Land decks. yeah, and it works very well. <laughs> All you need is four lands for Crankle yeah. Mob. Now, granted, like not five lands in the entire deck, yeah. but five lands in play. <laughs> I, I never saw the rest of your deck, so yeah. you know it could just be five lands in the <laughs> yeah, entire deck. You just got lucky and you got them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Easy last enough. goblin. Last right? one. Wart is back again. Wart the Raid Mother. A 3-3 Goblin Shaman for four. Gruel, Gruel. Enters the battlefield, create two one on red and green goblin warrior creature tokens. Uh, and then each red or green instant source spell you cast has conspire, which means that as you cast spell, you may tap two untapped creature control that you're a color with it. When you copy that spell, you start to the copy. Powerful stuff. Yep. It's six mana, though. Six mana is a lot. It is a three three. Yep. Um, it's five power across three bodies, but you're yeah, probably you using get, those for, yeah, you do get the for, other uh, for conspiring, though. I mean, we put Muxus in B. I wouldn't put this any higher than Muxus, so I, okay. would, I would put it in B. That's, that's pretty fair. It's I think... funny to look at the art of this yeah. and the art of Bogart Auntie. Yes. Because they're all, like, kind of docile and, you yeah. know, whatever. And now she's, like, now they're it's, crazy. like, they all had sugar. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that's kind of funny. <laughs> if anybody has a toddler. <laughs> I think this is in reverse, though, too, because, like, I think war yeah. this war was the first one. The other one's the second one, I believe, because, right, they, like, the – or is it is it the opposite? Uh, at least I mean, because like they had like the wise. like the Lorwyn, like you know, like I don't I don't know which one was which, which one came first. I'm gonna look it up. Let me know in the comments below. Maybe it was the other one, because yeah, maybe they all went crazy after the first one. So that's what it is. But yeah, I mean, I think that there's obviously some really powerful things you can do with this one. Again, like you're just trying to get a bunch of creature tokens in play, tap those creatures, copy things. So if you're getting that co tapping, copying even more, then you know, do some fireball type effects too. You can do that. Ritual effects as well. Yeah, you found it. Uh, so. Which came first, Lorwyn or Shadowmore? Lorwyn. Lorwyn. So Bogart Auntie is first. Ah, okay. So then they went crazy in the second. Yeah, one. right. They Got went it. to Shadowmore. That's where she came from. Easy enough. So there cool. You go. All right. Awesome. We did so it. goblins, we have solved it, right? These are the exact uh, tiers. And no <laughs> one can even, argue with them. I don't even remember what we put where. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay. Guessing. How many F tiers do you think we have? This is uh, so. This is in front of me. You can see it right now on the screen. Obviously, everyone else. But yeah, uh, Eric I can't cannot see it. see it. Um, Fs. Fs. How many Fs? Four. You're close. Five. five. How many D's? I feel like there's less D's than F's. Uh, well, if there's five F's, let's say there's four D's. You got it. Right. Oh my gosh! Look at that. All right. Uh, uh, C's. Oh, there's got to be a lot of C's. Um, so there's uh, we got forty-two. Mm -hmm. no, you don't have the math. Just gut. Know, what's your gut trying... say? Uh, Twelve. Eight. Eight. So the most actually is B, which is, I believe, 10, if I'm counting this correctly, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So actually, our curve actually does go pretty well. Um, the B's in the middle, kind of like F's kind yeah, of like just like a B's nothing. B's and C's should be the most, right? Yep. And then A, actually, A's up at 9. So the, you have the glut right there, like between A, B, and C, which is great. And then in S, you've got 6. So It's a lot of S's. A lot of probably goggles. a couple in there that might be well, A's. And there, yeah, there's, I think that's just like there are delineations between these. Like, and the problem is like, you know, when you have 42 that you're trying to rank, yeah. a lot more difficult to get those. If you have like 20 or so, then it's easy to kind of like disperse out like what truly is an S, which is this. But like, I think we did a good job of explaining like our thoughts on these. So. Yeah, I think like Dungeon Warden is probably an A in a casual format sure. than an S. I'd say like, I mean, when it comes to like the most powerful of these, it's probably Vile Smasher just because like. Oh, yeah. It can do crazy things, and also you have access to four colors. Nothing else has access. That, to four that's colors. That's such a good differentiator too. Yeah. Like when you start to consider how how flexible the build can be. Yep. Um, yeah, I totally agree. Hundred percent. Yeah. But yeah, I think regardless, uh, no one can argue with us in the comments below. It's all. Well, just blame solved. Eddie anyway. Blame Eddie the comments. Exactly. If we're yeah. wrong. It's his yes, fault. Exactly. So. Blame Eddie the comments below. Uh, thanks, Eric, for for <laughs> yeah. joining and, and showing me the uh, the expertise on all these. This and then, is fun. This is now where you talk for three hours and you do your poetry on. Yes, that's right. right. Um, yeah, I gotta find my book. Okay, so we're gonna be right back, and uh, Eric's gonna find the book. But of course, as always, thanks again for joining me, Eric. Yes. And thanks again, and have a good one. All right. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well.
Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.